Ever since the colonists dumped tea into Boston Harbor, Americans have been fighting over taxes. So the battle going on right now over extending those Bush tax cuts is in keeping with a proud tradition. And tonight, we put it all in focus. If the two certainties in life are death and taxes, it is also a certainty that every president is going to have a big fight over tax cuts during their administration. From the man who gave us Reaganomics. Our bill calls for a 5% reduction in the income tax rates. Who in 1981 cut tax rates by a whopping 23% at a cost to the government of over $750 billion. Ronald Reagan started with a boom, a tax cut for everyone. But then over the course of his two terms, he raised taxes more times than he cut them. You gotta tell the truth. To the first President Bush, whose famous promise Read my lips. No new taxes. Was broken 14 months later. Bush had to go back on that pledge. He had to raise taxes. That hurt him with Republicans, which went on to hurt him in the general election. Then he gave us the second biggest tax increase in American history. When Bill Clinton took office in 1993, he faced a $300 billion deficit. He cut government spending by $247 billion and raised taxes on top earners. That move and later tax cuts resulted in a budget surplus by 1998. In 2000, there was still a $230 billion surplus. George W. Bush campaigned on giving some of that money back to the people. The younger Bush went around telling people, look, I'm more like Ronald Reagan than my father. And at the time, the budget was in surplus, so the tax cut didn't seem like such a bad idea. The people of America have been overcharged, and on their behalf, I'm here asking for a refund. The Democrats were calling it an abomination. They were calling it unfair. Unfair because, they argued, the cuts favored the rich. If you're a millionaire under the Bush tax cut, you get a $46,000 tax cut, more than enough to pay for this Lexus. But if you're a typical working person, you get $227, and that's enough to buy this muffler. There were about a dozen Democrats who, in the end, voted for the president's tax cut plan. Uh, there was a lot of pressure. The tax In a rare Act Memorial Day session, the Senate passed Bush's $1.3 trillion dollar tax cut plan, lowering tax rates 3 to 5 percent in all income brackets, phasing out the estate tax, reducing the marriage penalty, and doubling the per-child credit to $1,000. The first broad tax relief in a generation. The end result was bipartisan, but Democratic support came with one condition, that the tax cuts expire in 10 years. Calls for more cuts followed in 2003. President Bush proposed reducing taxes on capital gains and dividends, but these were costlier times. By 2003, we were fighting two wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Spending was on the rise, and even some Republicans opposed the, this round of tax cuts. On May 23, 2003, so Vice President Dick Cheney cast the deciding vote, breaking a 50-50 tie, pushing forward a second round of cuts with the provision that they, too, expire at the end of 2010. Are you prepared to take the oath, Senator? I am. When Obama first came to office, he did not understand, nobody understood how bad things were. By the time I took office, we had a one-year deficit of over $1 trillion and projected deficits of $8 trillion over the next decade. And while those annual deficits added up to a now skyrocketing $14 trillion debt, the economic climate got even worse. The administration believed a devastating recession and high unemployment demanded immediate attention. So what the president decided right up front was that the number one priority was to stimulate growth quickly. The stimulus package was supposed to lead us to a robust recovery. That hasn't happened. The issue here is if you don't extend the tax cuts, will that damage the hope of the recovery strengthening? Most agree tax cuts will remain for the middle class. 
At issue is whether those cuts will stay put for higher earners. If they expire, couples making between $200,000 and $500,000 a year can expect to pay $700 to $1,000 more in federal taxes annually. If all the Bush tax cuts end for the top 2 percent of earners, $700 billion will be added to government coffers, helping to ease the debt. If all the cuts stay in place, the deficit will soar by $3.7 trillion over 10 years. This election has just changed the political calculation here, and it's probably going to be impossible for the president to get his way. Is compromise a possibility? It depends on who you ask. There must be some sensible common ground. We're looking forward uh, to the conversation uh, with the White House uh, over extending all of the current rates, and uh, I remain optimistic. One Democratic proposal says let the tax cuts expire for those making over a million dollars. But a senior White House official told us that's not really in play. So to be continued.